social banking from GT Bank. Anywhere, anytime, any device. Hello, my name is Otto Orandam, and this is my young CEO story. I'm a typical Nigerian, and also a very proud Nigerian. I grew up in Port Harcourt, and um, my parents were both in the medical field, retired medical doctor at the moment. My mom used to be a nurse until she also um, stopped at an early time. And um, all my life was basically um, in, 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 in Port Harcourt. And I've always been passionate about you know, basically making society a better place. And right from when I was a young child, I've always been involved in developmental projects and programs. And, um, and right from an early age, like 16, I started handling projects and running um, projects and developmental um, activities to help um, improve the state of, 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 of remote communities, improve the lives of people, things around health, education, um, human capital development generally. And um, I think it's been a wonderful um, experience for me. Okay, so Slum School Africa started during uh, my National Youth Service Program. I was posted to Lagos State, and um, just like every young person, I was really trying to get into the Lagos life. You know, the whole traffic, the challenges. I was working in a bank, and um, for me at that point, I always, you know, came in contact with children who were out of school. It was then I began, I began to see the realities in terms of out of school children. And um, I understood that there were lots of challenges facing the nation, you know, regarding human capital um, development, things around, you know, poor access to education, issues that affected the health situation in remote communities. And so there were lots of realities that caught my, my attention at that point. And I used to work in the bank, and whenever I go to work, I also watch, you know, and get to see um, the way Africa has been projected or Africa is being projected, you know, where people always look at us as poor, helpless, corrupt and all of that. And I said, this could change. And, you know, rather than just complaining and criticizing, I said, okay, it's time to do something. And most times when I go across the Todd Milan Bridge, I look down the bridge and I see this community called Makoko. And out of curiosity, I visited that community and I was shocked to see the reality, you know, Thousands of children were out of school. There were lots of, you know, poor access to health facilities, and lots of, you know, very, very um, um, sad realities that really challenged me. And at, at 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 some point, I was really traumatized. You know, when I go to work in the morning, I really can't concentrate because I was always thinking, what, you know, I'm here, and we have thousands of children who are out of school, and you know, and somehow I had to make a decision to quit my job. Uh, which was a huge decision, which I think was the biggest decision I ever made because there were lots of uh, pressure from family, from friends, from relatives, even from the, from the workplace at that point. You know, you don't have to leave. It's a beautiful career. You know, you can really make a successful um, uh, person in this field. And so I knew that it was really not the right place for me because I was not really actualizing my dreams and, 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 and I couldn't just sit back and watch things not go right and, you know, still keep on seeing the bad way and the bad image Africa you know, and especially Nigeria had. And so I left my job at that point and um, came into this community and tried to make friends, tried to meet the elders and the youths, tried to, you know, get myself integrated into, into the community. I, I, I understand basic languages or basic communication, you know, phrases at the moment. And so that was how Slum to School started. <laughs> Volunteer is basically um, through um, an online application process. We have we're really very active on social media. We on Twitter, Facebook, um, Instagram. We, are, we have a website. We have a blog. So we are really active on social media. And so young people, which is we say we are technology-driven generation, you know. And so lots of young people are really very much involved in social media. And so. We are out there. Young people get to see about, see, see what we do, get to connect to the vision, and people apply online. As, uh, as an organization, one of the things we've also been trying to push is a model that can help us get out of school children um, 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 across the country back to school. And so we need to engage more the public-private um, sector. The government needs to be more proactive. As a young person, I think the first thing you should be concerned about is understanding your purpose on earth. You know, and I think once you can understand or once you know the reason why you're here on Earth, 
every other thing falls into place. I started working with my friends. I had quite a number of friends I made during my university days, during my national youth service. You know, I'm naturally a very open person, so I usually meet and, and make quite a couple of friends. And so I told my friends then, we could do this. You know, why don't we just see how we could, you know, work together to see how we could get most of these children access to education. You know, but the challenge is still so huge. You know, we're talking about a country where over 10 million children are out of school. That's the highest in the world. You know, and for me, it bothers me because this is an emerging generation. And if we do not really do something about this threat at the moment, in the next 10 years, we're looking at a society that would be, right now we have issues of terrorism, we have lots of issues around, you know, unemployment, unemployability. There are lots of realities that are facing us and threatening our economy. And I think education is a fundamental part of you know, any nation's economical development. Education is the only way which you can build a strong human capital. And if we do not really invest and ensure that this particular generation of out of school children could have access to education, I think it's going to threaten the, the safety and security and the comfort of everyone who is you know, watching this video at this, at this point. My passion for slum to school has always been traced to the fact that, you know, we need to get uh, basically fundamental things around education right. We have thousands and millions of children who are out of school. And if these children do not have access to school or access to education, it means their future is very bleak. Every society needs a secured economy. Every society thrives to build a secure economy, it means we need a huge human capital, develop, uh, human capital. And um, human capital development is very key for every society that wants to be um, a developed nation, is, is a strong economy. And to achieve, a, to, achieve a, um, 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 to achieve that, where we have a, a strong human capital, I think education is the basic. And it's only through education that you can build um, uh, a secured um, economy. It's really only through education that you can have um, people who are educated, people who can be stakeholders and contributors to building a secure economy. I always say this to young people that we are born to die, you know, and we must always remind ourselves every day that what we are doing should be worth dying for. Is it bringing fulfillment? Is it bringing impact? Is it something that's bringing satisfaction? And so we shouldn't just live our lives to earn a living. We should live our lives to make an impact. You know, everyone has a gift and with that gift you can transform the society and you can make the lives of millions of people better. And so I think we should go out there and make a sacrifice. It could be challenging for the first few years, but in the long run it's always worth our, our while and it's always going to make you a happy person. So don't be threatened, don't feel scared, don't have fear. Believe in yourself, believe in your abilities, believe in your potential, believe in the talent you have and I'm sure in the long run you will be proud that you made such decisions. Hi guys, if you just enjoyed watching that video and you want to stay up to date with the latest in entertainment, lifestyle and more from inside Africa, why don't you hit the subscribe button right now. And if you want to keep on watching videos, then just simply hit the more videos button.